Professor Kartike Nachiyappan. He is an architect who has graduated from the Architectural Association. His research has been published in many esteemed journals, such as the Indian Concrete Journal. He is the founder and director of Studio of Architectural Urbanism, an art and architecture consultancy focusing on research and development of housing projects in Uti and in Chennai. His research interests include low-cost housing, architectural space making, informality and slums, inequalities in planning and policies in urban design. Welcome to UGC lecture series on architecture, urban design, unit number 4, lecture number 1. Come, let's take a look at the contents of the study today. So, we would be looking at the issues in urban places. So, which means that the end result of urban formation or urbanization had led to some of the issues which are the after effect of that. So, we will be looking at some of the issues and problems that are related to it. So, when cities grow, so we term urbanization as moving from rural to urban. So, moving into cities. So, when people move into cities as a result of migration, there are certain challenges that a city has to tackle upon in taking up this influx of population and that eventually creates some problems within a city. So, looking at urban problems, we could th think upon as an end result of urbanization, migration happens. When there are lot more economic opportunities in a city, people are pushed from the rural areas to the urban areas in search of employment and economic activities. When there is more development in an, in an urban economy, people are pulled towards cities. So, when all these happens, there are a set of problems that arise, which includes housing, transportation, water, sanitation, crime and fire. So, when you just think about the circle of these urban problems, everything is related to it. So, now the first problem of housing arises when more people come into the cities. So, when there is lot of migration coming into cities, people need shelter. When people need shelter and there are no enough shelters provided by governmental agencies or private agencies, there is a shortage over here and this again leads to congestion or transportation problems, which is nothing but more people need aspects in terms of moving from one place to another. So, the main aspect of people coming into cities is in search of jobs. So, in search of jobs from the place they live, they need to move back and forth into different places looking for opportunities. More people using the natural resource water, there is a shortage. Now, more people, the housing shortage creates issues of formation of slums and there is also a sanitation issue. There is more urban waste that is being generated more air, more noise and more water pollution that is being created and there is also health and hygiene aspects that are related to it. Now, more people coming in and that leads to the aspect of crime. So, lack of employment opportunities within cities force people to move into anti-social or corruption activities and fire is another major aspect due to the modern advent of technologies, people grow high in terms. So, vertical buildings line up the skylines or skyscrapers line up the skyline of particular cities and that are fire prone. So, fire safety is another important aspect that a city creates itself due to the end result of urbanization. Now, urbanization, the growth of cities are due to growing industries and increased immigration. So, these are the basic aspects which have been studied in previous chapters and rapid urbanization basically leads to widening gap between rich and poor. So, in a city, there is social inequality which is being created and this social inequality is based on the economic opportunities that a city provides. So, there are few people who are upscale, who are employed in a different firms, who engage themselves in different social activities where they are socially high uh, socially have high moral and the other people who have come in search of opportunities and who are led out who leads themselves in a life in a slum are considered to be socially vulnerable migration from farms to cities this is another major aspect where everyone has to or an urban planner has to think of where a person moves from this urban to rural migration has led to deployment of person. So, any person who has an opportunity within a city are focused on a particular age group. So, this person who migrates are within an age group of 18 and 30. So, take for an example of folklore arts in India. 
and especially the traditional arts of pottery or traditional arts of silk weaving in South India, where in the rural areas, the employment which was generated in terms of agriculture and silk weaving in Kanjipuram. Now, when lot of people have opportunities in industrial technologies and IT warehouses in Chennai, people move, which means that the employment that is generated in the rural part is being shifted in terms of a different economic bias that is created in cities. So, when these people between 18 and 30 that is otherwise called as youth are being pulled into cities, the old farmers and the old people who are involved traditionally in silk weaving, the viability is lost which again deprives the economic activities in that particular area. So, in 10 or I mean in a decade or two more the people who are involved in agricultural activities and people who are involved in silk weaving activities have already migrated to cities. So, there is no one to take up further that economic activity. So, this is a major cause or a flare on migration from farms to cities. So, which means that unequal opportunities are provided. So, a social policy should be reformed in terms of providing equal opportunities and despecializing activities or decentralizing industries from cities to the farms major problem is tenements. So, from a single family dwelling unit say uh, 6 or 7 decades back there were single family dwelling units in cities. Post all these advent of technologies the urban problems created multifamily urban dwellings. So, this multifamily urban tenements are nothing but growing high. Growing high leads to many people living in unhealthy conditions. A house that has supposed to be accommodating 4 to 5 people accommodates 10 to 15 people living in an unhealthy condition as you can look at this image. Another important aspect is crime. So, more people forced into cities are under the barrier of providing economic opportunities. So, when they do not find economic opportunities this increases the population moving into antisocial activities. Fire uh, skyscrapers are made possible today and these line up the skyline of many cities and these possibility of elevators and steel buildings more increased the safety in terms of fire protection in cities. So, this is also explained in the fire accident that was in New York in 19 level of the trial shirt waste factory where 146 female people or the workers died. So, and these people are mostly immigrants. So, which means that any country which occupies more of an industrial nature that is post world war had lot of immigrants coming from other cities. So, what happens to the safety of these buildings will become a question mark. Now, this image it clearly explains what exactly is the urban living condition of a family dwelling in an urban unit which is a slum. So, you could see completely unhealthy aspect of a river edge which is unclean water and you could see lot of solid waste being dumped from the house tenements. And you could also see the roof nature of those buildings are impermanent in nature, they are not permanent structures where the walls are consisting of tin sheets which are again impermanent, these are temporary structures elevated around a stilt where unhealthy conditions people use for defecation. So, there is no particular toilet facility whereas, boxes like this are created as toilet facilities for people over here. How many people could use such toilets and even though people use these toilets the extreme waste of it gets again into the water polluting it. So, this is again become a cycle of transactions that are happening. Urban people f do not find houses, they find squatter settlements, slums are formed, generated waste the waste is being put down into water and again it recycles to them. So, this is a cycle of transformation that is happening as an end result of urbanization. So, what would happen to these quality of living conditions if this is not taken care of? Again, people or the workers or the migrants coming are forced to live in a condition like a sleeping bag. So, they do not find a proper place to live and the tenements they are provided are not of good quality. Some of the workers try to spend their time sleeping around in the industrial working unit. So, imagine people living and sleeping in the areas where machineries and equipments are kept. So, this again promotes an unhealthy living environment. Squatters town, again there are high tenements of buildings lined up in the side and there are small lower settlements of multifamily dwelling units. There are narrow streets, they are inaccessible and these inaccessibility has led to water shortage. Uh, there are no proper hygiene, sanitary facilities, water facilities. So, these are improving day by day. 
this is also urbanization is another factor to lead up homelessness there are many kids and child laborers who are homeless and find these city niches to sleep across sleeping in the streets have been made possible due to urbanization and due to housing shortage and again what was once domesticated are lying on the roads carrying carriages people living on streets so all these have come to the streets where the character of the street has been completely vanishing due to new advent of technologies in the city is growing which means that there is no right thing that is being followed there is no urban design principle that is being implemented in the cities to be followed important aspect of city's growth is urban sprawl so moving of a city from one expanding itself infringes so what was the city skyline over here expand itself into different fringes occupying the rural lands so which means that urban sprawl has led to occupying of rural areas and these rural areas started to accommodate factories power stations commuter villages and motorways railways connect those so is this a good scenario is urban sprawl a good thing will be debated so urban sprawl again had led to congested road networks that form or line up the peri urban conditions or the edge of different fringes of the cities that had left out many spaces that are redundant in nature so you could imagine of the above spaces which are left redundant how many families could be accommodated so cities are growing in a direction where these arterial roads occupy much of a place rather than houses occupying much of a space if cities grow grow and grow this would be the kind of dense environment which is being exhibited so rather than having a rural landscape which is much in terms of healthier living the urban landscape has created a lot of chaotic environments that are growing so these urban environments have to be regulated through different urban principles as well as urban policies so you could see already by 2011 50% of the world has already been urbanized and this image explains on how urbanization has happened throughout the world and how many cities are already grown in terms of urban population so the remaining cities and the natural reserves or the forest areas are still kept closed where people have not inhabited but if the city are growing more and more eventually those will be occupied and already from the rural parts people have started moving into urban centers so some of the terms for you to understand includes urban sprawl so it is a dynamic uncontrolled process of urban expansion along transportational corridors so only if there is a provision of people to connect from one place to another urban sprawl happens urbanization it's a population shift from rural areas to urban areas suburbanization is a general ten, trend followed by the city dwellers to move out and live in and relaxed condition it's a relaxed kind of housing environmental area morely the land use form is predominated by residential population density is nothing but the human population per unit area core was is french core is the dense city center or the olden city center where multifunctional activities happen and fringes refers to the low density area usually at the exurban perimeter in the fringes of the city now the pattern of growth so this is a very clever diagram which explains the quality of life being perceived to increase when we move from city to rural areas so it is always a question of debate whether it is good to move from rural to urban areas or it is good to move from urban to rural areas but from a central business district to an inner city till the commuter belt it is seen that the quality of life is perceived to increase in a rural area because it is much more dominated by a landscape of green rather coming to a city center which is dominated by skyline or high rise buildings so as you move on you could see inner city which has lot of suburban buildings you could see inner suburbs or outer suburbs which have garden based buildings and individual or multi family dwelling units edge of the city which has cluster of houses or gated communities and moving to rural areas which have farmlands just an example of an american city which is grown along the river mississippi so you could see in 1970 the population was grown around the fringes of the urban river and the population was around 800000 in over a two decade the population started expanding itself into the northeast and all directions where along the memphis airport that is the city's airport things started developing around this area so which means that the cities grow and literally connect 
another example where the population density in 1970s was around 971,000 was the city core. Now, due to expanded urban sprawl, there is another exurbia or suburbs which is being created, which has resulted to a population growth of 2 million. Another example of island nation, which has a population which is dispersed across the edge of the water bodies. Now, due to the population increase from 1970, a two decadal growth has seen population increase from 1.7 million to 2.4 million. Now, why is this a problem? Is urban sprawl good or bad? This debate leads to a question on, is it seen as an opportunity where city is getting despatialized and moving into other units? Is it a positive or a negative outlook? Or should we consider it as when urban sprawl happens, all our rural areas have been eaten up, the farmlands are decreasing and the building footprints are increasing. So the problem is basically on depleting the environment. First important loss is for the loss of ecosystem services, which means there is when you deploy a lot of trees, when you destroy trees, flood control is lost, pollination, nitrogen fixation and carbon dioxide. There is no fresh oxygen left. Loss of biodiversity, the flora and fauna of a particular country gets depleted. Habitat fragmentation, there is a, I mean, there is a kind of human life which is being dispersed from one area to another. There is a population loss in a particular area. Land loss, which means that the farmland and all these agricultural land and forest areas are being occupied or chewed up by investors. Impervious surfaces, polluted runoffs, heat island effect. So, this urban sprawl has caused environmental degradations in growth of cities. Another important effect is heat island effect, the temperature differences between the cities and the suburbs. So, heat islands have created more in terms of, so the summers need more cooling expenses and the winters need more heating expenses. So, which means that the demand for air conditioning costs and air pollution and greenhouse emissions have increased and heat related illness and mortality and water quality has decreased due to heat island effects. So, you could see from rural area which is much more dominated in section by a lot of trees in a downtown or an urban park which is dominated by skylines. As it moves down to suburbs, it is again more in terms of houses with high lines. So, which becomes important either a downtown which acts or facilitates more uh, economic transactions or rural areas which is monotonous in nature. Another important aspect of it is the automobile, which has created much chaotic environment in laying of highways, freeways and expressways, which has resulted in air pollution, fossil fuel emission and gas and energy costs. So, more in terms of fuel, more people travel, more people use it, so which releases energy into the environment. Income inequality and poverty is another aspect of the growth which results in economic aspects. So, we say that cities provide opportunity, more people come into the city, but what happens in a city is there is no economic opportunities that be that is being generated, there is no proper housing provision that is given. So, which means that these people, the rich get richer and poor get poorer becomes the inequality component. So, all of them are not provided equal opportunities in cities. There is always a social stratification because of this word called poverty. So, all the low income residents are unable to pay the cost of their basic living and they are not accessible to the three basic forms which is the food, shelter and clothing. So, to move forward, what would be a successful policy? So, either you have active efficient management of urban development, you should reduce economic and environment externalities and there should be an improved standard of living in every city that is being developed. So, this could be altered in terms of a policy where an urban designer comes and takes or implements the successful policy in terms of visualization of cities. Place making is an other concept ideally followed in a city which means that identity creating. So, place making and identity create experiences that connect people to the place. So, I say this is my place, I identify myself in my place. So, it provides a strong sense of you are here by differentiating a place or space from others. Place making and identity is a multidisciplinary approach of planning, design and development of public spaces. It uses materiality, form and context to express the uniqueness of a place and inspire, engage, connect and call users to action. So, this again relates back to the olden day or the medieval town planning which had the forum or the Greek agora or the central church places or the marketplaces where 
embodying all the civic sense which means involving people into a city center providing them breathing spaces or public spaces enriches the quality of an urban environment. So, place making is an important aspect that of urban design in designing a city. What makes it a place or what makes it a great place? Sociability aspect, users and activities, access and linkages and comfort and image. So, any person who is in a particular place should identify himself in terms of sociability which means it should be welcoming, interactive, friendly, pride, neighborhood. So, he should be able to accommodate himself in a wider range of community. It, it should have a multiple use of activities and uses for a user to engage in. It should have good connected linkages to neighborhood so that people can access it and anyone coming across that place should have a comfort of his own. He should feel spiritually comforted, he should be economically comforted, he should feel himself as a place or own the place. So, a benefit of having a place includes it builds and supports local economy. You could have lot of marketplaces coming across, a micro economy could be generated from that place. It nurtures and defines community identity, it fosters frequent and meaningful contact draws a diverse population. So, when there is a place that is being made, you create a place and you invite many people of a city to come in. So, it draws a diverse population into it, it promotes a sense of comfort and it creates improved accessibility. So, place making and identity design accentuate the combination of physical features, people, function, history, culture and potential that make the place a unique. So, it encompasses every part of urban design to make the I mean to take the great effects of a place. To envision city as a place becomes a question on cities that are developing today. You could see a lot of skyscrapers, you could rather see very less public buildings. So, how could you make a city a place becomes question on developing new urban environments. Nowadays, cities are moving more in terms of privatized public realms. If you go to Italy and see a series of grand staircases, you could see lot of people occupying it and those people are part of diverse population of the city's population. But nowadays, creating grand spaces have been restricted to public plazas which are being privatized. Most of the corporate or the multinational companies have grand staircases which are being just used as a transport medium from moving one place to another, but rather being used by the public in terms of creating a real. Role of real estate plays a very important role over here because any open space in a city is decided to be chewed upon by a real estate or a developer in terms of building a high rise environment. So, to add density these open spaces are being taken up by investors to build tall buildings. So, what will happen for the city to breathe? If there is no space for a person inside a city to have himself organized around an open space, where will he go will become a question mark. Role of transportation in terms of connectivity becomes an important aspect and second thing is providing lot of transport infrastructure within the city and the roads have left lot of derelict spaces like important junctions of the cities have been left across open where these redundant spaces are of no use. So, transportation plays a very important role in designing spaces. Role of zoning. So, every city has a land use map or a zoning map which allocates open space areas, which allocates residential areas. So, the planning aspect plays a very important role in allocating these open resources available for a public. Globalization, pushing economy towards different aspects, the interconnection and linkages between all the countries play a very important role in creating diverse cultures, different social influences in a city, but it should be taken in a positive hope and positive way. Rather, globalization also has negative and adverse effects to it, including accountability, terrorism, shrinking world, technology connecting different parts, a free trade, culture, capitalism, monopoly. It has poverty as well as growth. We could not say a city is not marching forward, it is growing forward, but leaving behind the trail of poverty, trade versus aid, outsourcing. So, there are different effects equality, inequality. So, all these have to be taken in a positive, nurtured in a positive way and funneled in terms of creating good environments. Some of the contemporary approach to the cities which could be thought about 
Our first would be ideas of sustainability. Sustainable cities is not about promoting green cities, but it should be socially sustainable. It should promote equal equality among citizens. It should have an equal disperse of job allocations to all the citizens. It should be economically viable and sustainable. Good wages which are being supported. There should not be an inequality in the ages got by a labor as well as. So, there should be a proper hierarchy of uh, or sustainable income in cities that has to be provided as well as it should be energy efficient. Heritage should be conserved and all important aspects of cities that are growing have a history. So, as we were thinking about Aldo Rossi's history as a collective memory. So, every city has an important aspect or memory to it attached to it. So, that has to be preserved that has to be conserved and renewed. So, uh, there are different methods of conservation, building conservation including preservation, maintenance, restoration, reconstruction and adaptation. So, all these methods of conservation of historic parts have to be taken into accountability aspect and urban catalysts have to be fostered in a way it fosters economic development rather than hindering development. It should be a transit metropolis which means that means of railways or mean, means of fast moving transport should link different cities in different parts and good interconnectivity in these globalized world helps develop more economies. Ideally the transit hub has to be connected to the multi natured environment in and around everything and a sustainable future for, for the same. And ideally the last part of it would be community participation, inform and involve your citizen as a whole. So, any city should be participatory in nature. This participation allows public to take a sense of pride in design of his own city. A city is not a private property, it is owned by the public, it is for the public. So, when community participates in every aspect of the policy and planning of a particular city state or a nationwide city that makes it a much more viable space. So, would master plan cover all the scale? Yes, of course, a master planning or an urban designer rather designing just the entire city, he takes into consideration individual user, he takes into consideration every street, he takes into consideration every edge of a city, the landscapes of the city, individual building and the details of every smaller elements in a city. So, he encompasses from a user to a small scale of a building to an entire city as such. So, are we really marching towards good cities becomes a question or it becomes important in modern days where everyone should rethink how the cities were before, encompass all the political, social, religious, cultural, geographical environments put together to form the city composition. So, rethinking cities on how it was and rather changing the entire urban landscape, new cities have to be thought as a sense of history or a collective memory and things have to be incorporated with certain elements that are being used in urban design following certain principles and these principles should create heterogeneous urban environments and the urban environments in cities should be livable and it should be workable. It should not be a monolith just not for a place for public. So, all the public should be involved in creating and rethinking cities. So, just to summarize things we have looked today, so it includes some of the issues in urban spaces including the challenges of urbanization, automobiles, advent and place making was another concept which is discussed today and some of the questions to be pondered upon. So, challenges of urbanization, how it has been, what is public and private realm. So, there are some of the case studies which could be seen in the next chapter till then, thank you.